Welcome everybody to the Community Virtual Library Hypergrid Resource Library, where we're going to be taking a tour today, Hypergrid jumping over to Third Rock to Wonderland. I'll stand here by the white rabbit as people are gathering. In the main library building over there, there's some information about hypergridding, and then there's a, a local teleport, the black teleporters. There's a space station where um, there are portals to uh, different educational uh, regions in OpenSim and, you know, Third Rock, and I've got one to, um, that goes up to, uh, uh, to the same location, but I wanted to create this little, um, you know, let's go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> There's note cards throughout this area. She's got these books sitting here, so I'm standing right next to the, um, this little podium, and there's a note card, but you'll notice um, this is the start of Alice in Wonderland. We're, we're the, the little pillows behind me. This is where the, the, the Alice and her sister were reading their, their book and falling asleep under the trees. So this is the start of the Alice in Wonderland. And you can uh, zoom in on the book. If it doesn't res quickly and you can't see, you know, the words, you, you can click for a note card. Um, but you can zoom in and read the story. I'm going to turn off my sounds a little bit, just so if I record the story, you don't hear that sound effect going on. Uh, I'll, I'll read this page if you want. That'd be great. Go ahead, Bethany. It's so nice, you know. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversations? So she was considering in her own mind as well as she could, for the hot day made her feel very sleepy and stupid, whether the pleasure of making a daisy chain would be worth the trouble of getting up and picking the daisies, when suddenly a white rabbit with pink eyes ran close by her. So I, I, I love, you know, reading that and noticing the daisies planted here, you know, and uh, it's just so evocative to think about um, stories and literature and having, I, I, the first time I saw this location, I thought, this is so incredible. It's an entire book that's come to life and it doesn't detract from the fact that we read these books and these stories, but it just, uh, it enhances it. It's I just love this build and I've, I've literally only been here a couple times and I haven't been through everything. There's just so much to see. Let's go ahead and walk over to the next one by the rabbit. You want to read that, Val, or shall I read it? Uh, I think also Elise said she wanted to read. Um, Ellie. Oh, wanted... do. Yeah. Is there a note card in that? Nope. Is it resing for you, Elise? You want to read that one? Yeah, I can go ahead and read it. Um, I can see it. I'm zooming in a little bit more now, though. <laughs> Alice started to her feet, for it flashed across her mind that she had never before seen a rabbit with either a waistcoat pocket or a watch to take out of it, and burning with curiosity, she ran across the field after it, and fortunately was just in time to see it pop down a large rabbit hole under the hedge. In another moment, down went Alice after it, never once considering how in the world she was to get out again. The rabbit hole went straight on like a tunnel for some way, and then dipped suddenly down, so suddenly that Alice had not a moment to think about stopping herself before she found herself falling down a very deep well. Mm -hmm. Oh, I seem to remember something about this location. <laughs> we go in here yes i remember dawn saying this one has a lot of different uh portals right place it kind yeah. of has all the portals of the story should we check it out the hall of doors it, the only the only thing with doing this you guys 
is we'll all end up in different locations. So maybe we should just look at it if, unless we all go through the good same point. doorway. Yeah, good point. We, should, we can check this whole room out, but we don't want to get too separated. But yeah, you can't, you can't click on them because then poof, you'll disappear. <laughs> oh, the croquet game. If you hover your mouse over them, though, they tell you what they are. The croquet game. There's the mock turtle and griffin. Um, what's this one? Tea party. And there's a little mini one here over. Oh. Yeah, I don't remember that. Eat me. <laughs> and the little door. Oh, right. Ooh, yeah. Ellie, is the book in here um, resing for you? You could read that one if you want, if it's resing. I might have a note card. Sure. And it is resing. Thank you. There were doors all around the hall, but they all were locked. And when Alice had been all the way down one side and up the other, trying every door, she walked sadly down the middle, wondering how she was ever to get out again. Suddenly, she came upon a little three-legged table, all made of solid glass. There was nothing on it except a tiny gold key, and Alice's first thought was that it might belong to one of the doors of the hall. But alas! Either the locks were too large or the key was too small, but at any rate, it would not open any of them. However, on the second time round, she came upon a low curtain she had not noticed before, and behind it was a little door about 15 inches high. She tried the little go key in the lock, and to her great delight, it fitted. Super cool. <laughs> It's so like we're inside the story. Love it. And so do then, we want to continue down the path or, or pick a, a location from one of these portals? What do you think? Um, the path follows the story, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and if I'm mm -hmm. filming, that might be good because I can get a shot of you guys walking down the path. And uh, there's another book out there by the pond. Okay. I think if you came back by yourself, you could just explore through the doors and it's very, um, you can do it as an individual or as a group. You wanna read this one, Bethany? Hmm, sure. Oh, hold on, let me navigate to where I can read. <laughs> First, it marked out a race course in a sort of circle. The exact shape doesn't matter, it said. And then all of the party were placed along the course here and there. There was no one, two, three and away, but they began running when they liked and left off when they liked so that it was not easy to know when the race was over. However, when they had been running half an hour or so and were quite dry again, the dodo suddenly called out, the race is over. And they all crowded around it, panting and asked, but who is one? I'm cameraing in on all of the, the birds here in the race around the pond. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah, it's awesome. And then it looks like the path goes up this way to the right. Yeah, I love that it's very clear, kind of, she's, she's just done an amazing job with this location. Um, it's, you don't have to even know the story. You can just follow the path. And look at all these beautiful colored mushrooms. <laughs> mm. Oh, and I just noticed these float. What are these floating? Oh, oh, they're sits. <laughs> you can click on one of these sit. It's the mushroom circle dance. <laughs> and then, of course, the uh, the hookah smoking caterpillar. Oh, how come I'm not dancing? I'm sitting. Maybe I should stand. Oh, okay. Mushroom dance. There we go. Animate. <laughs> oh my gosh, you gotta love this. Yeah, it's beautiful. I just think, you know, I, I'm, I was so inspired by this and I have such hopes for what I want to do with um, Limeland, but imagine teaching literature and bringing your students here and 
really bringing this story to life. And, and I, I just think it's, this is amazing. Great, great example of immersive learning and literature. Absolutely. Somebody want to zoom in on this book and read it? I'll read it if nobody else does. Go ahead, Bethany. I'll volunteer as soon as I find it. Okay, it's right oh, by the, yeah, got it, sidearm. Hey, Bethany. There was a large mushroom growing near her about the same height as herself, and when she had looked under it, and on both sides of it, and behind it, it occurred to her that she might as well look and see what was on the top of it. She stretched herself up on tiptoe, and peeped over the edge of the mushroom, and her eyes immediately met those of a large caterpillar that was sitting on the top with its arms folded, quietly smoking a long hookah, and taking not the smallest notice of her or of anything else. Super cool. It's like we're all inside the story. I'm going to stop dancing. <laughs> and then it looks like the path heads past the giant lollipop here. It's so beautiful. I agree, Ellie. It would be great to have students build different components. Oh, Dawn's here. Yay! Hooray! Ah, there she is. <laughs> Dawn, we're so amazed and impressed. We're just loving this, immersed in the story. Thank you for sharing it. Hi, everyone. Okay, I'm going to walk over to this book and read what's in front of uh, the, the building here. This one says, The door led right into a large kitchen, which was full of smoke from one end to the other. The Duchess was sitting on a three-legged stool in the middle, nursing a baby. The cook was leaning over the fire, stirring a large cauldron, which seemed to be full of soup. The only things in the kitchen that did not sneeze were the cook and a large cat, which was sitting on the hearth and grinning from ear to ear. Please, would you tell me, said Alice, a little timidly, for she was not quite sure whether it was good manners for her to speak first. Why your cat grins like that? It's a Cheser cat, said the Duchess, and that's why. Pig! Oh, the little pig in the... <laughs> the little pig in the bed. <laughs> Fabulous oh, textures. He looks so real. <laughs> oh. I love pigs. Oh, oh, look at the Cheshire cat. Oh, I hadn't seen that before. I'm going to totally take a picture oh, of this. There, I missed the Cheshire cat grinning. <laughs> love it. <laughs> and the pig makes noises. <laughs> Turn my sounds back on. Oh good, I got a little oink in there. <laughs> Okay, now do we head across the bridge? Yep. This is beautiful. Oh, I love this part. We can sit at the tea, the table. <laughs> <laughs>
and somebody can zoom in on the on the book there at the end of the table if you want. Okay, if nobody's going to read, I, I can go ahead and do it. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just position my camera a little bit. I've learned so much being in virtual worlds about how to <laughs> manage things like my camera view. Um, the table was a large one, but the three were all crowded together at one corner of it. No room, no room, they cried out when they saw Alice coming. There's plenty of room. Um, said Alice indignantly, and she sat down in a large armchair at one end of the table. Have some wine, the March Hare said in an encouraging tone. Alice looked all around the table, but there was nothing on it but tea. I don't see any wine, she remarked. Don't you just love all these different colorful textures and the rugs? It's just, you just feel so incredibly immersed. Oh, and I noticed things like Zoe said, the tree, the little, the little door in the tree. I, ha I uh, hadn't noticed that before. I know. Look at that. And there's a book by the door in the tree. Somebody want to read that one? Sure, I can. Just as she said this, she noticed that one of the trees had a door leading right into it. That's very curious, she thought. But everything's curious today. I think I may as well go in at once. And in she went. Once more, she found herself in the long hall and close to the little glass table. Now I'll manage better this time, she said to herself, and began by taking the little gold key and unlocking the door that led into the garden. Super cool. So where should we head next? Up the path? Yeah, I think that's the next... Um... So I bet that little door leads back to the Hall of Doors. I'm going to turn off our name tags. Just uh, I've got some shots with them on, but I think it might be nice to have it so beautiful. Take the name tags off. Oh, Don, it looks like you're, well, no, I'm not sure if you're saying anything. Okay, somebody want to read this book? Uh, yeah, I can go ahead and read it. Thanks, Elise. Let it finish rising. A large rose tree stood near the entrance of the garden. The roses growing on it were white, but there were three gardeners at it, busily painting them red. Alice thought this was a very curious thing, and she went nearer to watch them. And just as she came up to them, she heard one of them say, Look out now, Five! Don't go splashing paint over me like that! I couldn't help it, said Five, in a sulky tone. Seven jogged my elbow! on which Seven looked up and said, That's right, Five, always lay the blame on others. I'm zooming in on the, on the cards. They're awesome. They're carrying their paintbrushes. <laughs> I love the expressions on them. I mean, their faces are so, yeah. Fabulous. All right, and then I guess we go out this way and up the little path, up the steps. Yeah, can I ask Zoe how long you've worked on this project? This is obviously a huge, huge undertaking. I don't remember, actually. Um, <laughs> it, that means it's a long time. Um, 
I think I worked on it a little over the years because once in a while I'll update it if I see something like when I saw flamingos. The I think these are mesh flamingos, maybe. I uh, you know then I'll bring some or maybe these are sculpt flamingos, but I'll bring it in if it looks better than what I have. Oh, hedgehogs! Is a hedgehog. I can go ahead and I can go ahead and read uh, the book for this one. I'll start that while you're camming around looking at everything. Get to your places, shouted the queen in a voice of thunder, and people began running about in all directions, tumbling up against each other. However, they got settled down in a minute or two, and the game began. Alice thought she had never seen such a curious croquet ground in her life. It was all ridges and furrows. The balls were live hedgehogs, the mallets live flamingos, and the soldiers had to double themselves up to stand on their hands and feet to make the arches. You want to lead the way, Bethany? It looks like the path goes up some steps. Sure. Mushrooms. Ooh, cool. <laughs> mm. Waiting for the book to res, but <clears throat> let's see what this says. They had not gone far before they saw the mock turtle in the distance, sitting sad and lonely on a little ledge of rock, and as they came nearer, Alice could hear him sighing as if his heart would break. She pitied him deeply. What is his sorrow? she asked the griffin, and the griffin answered very nearly in the same words as before, it's all his fancy, that he hasn't, he's, he hasn't got no sorrow, you know, come on. Beautiful. Somebody else going to read this one? Let's see. Sidearm, any volunteers? <laughs> I'll read it if nobody else will. Oh, I can read it. Oh, yeah, go ahead. In the very middle of the court was a table with a large dish of tarts upon it. They looked so good that it made Alice quite hungry to look at them. I wish they'd get the trial done, she thought, and hand round the refreshments. But there seemed to be no chance of this. So she began looking at everything about her to pass away the time. Alice had never been in a court of justice before, but she had read about them in books, and she was quite pleased to find that she knew the name of nearly everything there. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. We can look all around just like Alice did. <laughs> Let's see, is this the next way? Parts are here. I think this is the right way. Wait, is this the way we came? Nope, this is the way I think. Oh. 
click here for a note card. <clears throat> oh, through the looking glass. Yes, I see. I see the uh, the book there. You can see the book below the arrow through the looking glass. Beautiful. I'll read this one. Oh, Kitty, how nice it would be if we could only get through into Looking Glass House. I'm sure it's got, oh, such beautiful things in it. Let's pretend there's a way of getting through into it. Somehow, Kitty, let's pretend the glass has got all soft like gauze so that we can get through. Why, it's turning into a sort of mist now, I declare. It'll be easy enough to get through. She was up on the chimney piece while she said this, though she hardly knew how she had got there. And certainly, the glass was beginning to melt away, just like a bright, silvery mist. Looks like a steep, steep path ahead. <laughs> Oops. Oh, the flowers have faces in them. <laughs> oh, cool. I'm going to cam in on a face. Somebody want to read the, the book by the tree? I'll read it. This time she came upon a large flower bed with a border of daisies and a willow tree growing in the middle. Oh, tiger lily, said Alice, addressing herself to one that was waving gracefully about in the wind. I wish you could talk. We could talk, said the tiger lily, when there's anybody worth talking to. Alice was so astonished that she could not speak for a minute. It quite seemed to take her breath away. At length, as the tiger lily only went on waving about, she spoke again in a timid voice, almost in a whisper. And can all the flowers talk? This is just exceptional, Dawn. All the flowers with yeah. their faces. It's... Super impressive. It's one of my favorite parts of the books. Mm. Okay. I see Tweedledum's house and the house of Tweedledee. So which way do we go here? Maybe someone can read this book, I see Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Collins here. It says, I know what you're thinking about, said Tweedledum. But it isn't so no-how. Contrarywise, continued Tweedledee, if it was so, it might be, and if it were so, it would be, but it isn't, it ain't, that's logic. I was thinking, Alice said very politely, which is the best way out of this wood? It's getting so dark, would you tell me, please? But the little men only looked at each other and grinned. They looked so exactly like a couple of great schoolboys that Alice couldn't help pointing her finger at Tweedledum and saying, First boy! No, how? Tweedledum cried out briskly. I'm just, uh, 
I'm just camming in on their houses. They're so adorable. I can read this book in front of the little uh, build here. She looked at the queen who seemed to have suddenly wrapped herself up in wool. Alice rubbed her eyes and looked again. She couldn't make out what had happened at all. Was she in a shop? And was that really, was it really a sheep that was sitting on the other side of the counter? Rub as she could, she could make n nothing more of it. She was in a little dark shop, leaning with her elbows on the counter, and opposite to her was an old sheep, sitting in an armchair, knitting, and every now and then leaving off to look at her through a great pair of spectacles. I'll read this one here by the boat, too. So the boat was left to drift down the stream, as it would, till it glided gently in among the waving rushes. And then the little sleeves were carefully rolled up, and the little arms were plunged in elbow deep to get the rushes a good long way down before breaking them off. And for a while Alice forgot all about the sheep and the knitting, as she bent over the side of the boat with just the ends of her tangled hair dipping into the water while with bright, eager eyes she caught at one bunch after another of the darling-scented rushes. I only hope the boat won't tipple over, she said to herself. I had to look up what sweet rushes really look like. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's interesting how much it takes research into what what is going on in the, in literature, especially when it's, you know, another era. We don't always call it the same words. Yes, I think they look like wild irises. Mm. I'm camming in on those. Oh, beautiful. The textures even move. Yeah, I'm looking up sweet rushes now, too. Sweet rushes. And I noticed it said the word tipple. tipple? Right, right. Like tipple topple. Like, oh, tipple. <laughs> Right, that was odd because the tipple that I know is a musical instrument, and so that was strange to me. I think I see someone sitting on a wall over the bridge. <laughs> oh. Somebody going to want to read this next one? Humpty Dumpty. It's Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> I'll read it. And how exactly like an egg he is, she said aloud, standing with her hands ready to catch him, for she was every moment expecting him to fall. It's very provoking, Humpty Dumpty said after a long silence, looking away from Alice as he spoke, to be called an egg. Very. I said you looked like an egg, sir, Alice gently explained. And some eggs are very pretty, you know, she added, hoping to turn her remark into sort of a compliment. Some people, said Humpty Dumpty, looking away from her as usual, have no more sense than a baby. Let's walk inside and somebody can read the book inside. The little fenced area.
See the lion and the unicorn. Cool. Um, I can go ahead and read. Uh, the lion and the unicorn were fighting for the crown. Lion beat the unicorn all round the town. Some gave them white bread, some gave them brown. Some gave them plum cake and drummed them out of town. Does the one that wins get the crown? She asked as well as she could, for the run was putting her quite out of breath. Dear me, no, said the idea. I'll read this one. I see the knights. She's my prisoner, you know, the red knight said at last. Yes, but when I came and rescued her, the white knight replied. Well, we must fight for her then, said the red knight, as he took up his helmet, which hung from the saddle and was something the shape of a horse's head, and put it on. You will observe the rules of battle, of course, the white knight remarked, putting on his helmet too. I always do, said the Red Knight. Mm -hmm. Are we heading up this way? Yeah, the sounds really add to the ambiance. I love how you move around and you hear the birds, you hear the the, the wind or the, the, the water and then those horses. I love that. Sound really adds a huge amount to a virtual environment. I'm turning my sound back on. <laughs> You're right. And somebody can cam in on this book if you want and read it. I'm going to pan back and get a a shot of this beautiful castle here. Oh, so there's this castle, and then I see another castle in the distance. Oh, I think that might be the Great Hall. <laughs> I think that's Harry Potter's castle in the distance, right? Oh, yeah. There's a book in here. Oh, I just want to explore all around. It's just great that there's little books that sort of take from the literature to lead you on the path through the build. It's, it's brilliant, Dawn. I'm not sure that it'll work for people from another uh, grid. But this crown, once because Alice gets crowned, um, this crown you can actually take. Mm, the, the one that's floating over the table. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to try to take a yeah. copy. We click on it. Yeah. Yes, you'll probably get it eventually, but it takes a long time for me to get something. I, I tested it out as, you know, coming from another grid. Yeah, it'll end up in your suitcase. So yes. I've got a copy of it in my suitcase. We just well, that was quick the then. Yeah, I'm going to change my hat, take off my beloved Meowch hat. Let's see if I can put the crown on. Crown. Oh, yeah, I it see works. someone that has the crown on. Yes, yeah. it works. That was good. I did ask the tech, um, and he restarted the regen last night. Um, no. hmm. So you all get crowned, too, from you know, coming to the end. <laughs> Wonderland crowned. I'm going to try it. It works. I took off my book hat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sue Moon's got hers on. Oh, it's so cool. We've got our Alice in Wonderland crowns. 
I am going to have to leave you guys. It's the crazy start to the semester as oh. always. And I've got somebody who desperately needs my help. So I'm going to, I'm going to, but I hope you all come back and thank you so much for coming. Oh, thank you, Bethany. This was so fun. Great tour. Thank you for setting it up at, the, at our Hypergrid Resource Library. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. All right. I'll see you guys a little later. And this is uh, sort of the ending of the story. It's actually the ending of Alice in Wonderland. Um, through the looking glass ends at the castle, really. Okay. But I thought it would be a fitting ending to both books, um, you know, to have her wake up. farm is beautiful. I see the patch all um, over there all cultivated with pumpkins and carrots, <laughs> eggplants. All the textures are great. Somebody want to read that final book there on the pedestal? Sure. It says, So she sat on with closed eyes and half believed herself in Wonderland, though she knew she had but to open them again and all would change to dull reality. The grass would only be rustling in the wind and the pool rippling to the waving of the reeds. The rattling teacups would change to tinkling sheep bells and the queen's shrill cries to the voice of the shepherd boy, and the sneeze of the baby, the shriek of the griffin, and all the other queer noises would change, she knew, to the confused clamor of the busy farmyard. This is wonderful. Thank you so much, Dawn, for sharing this with us, and uh, just a great immersive experience in literature. <laughs>